I think um, everything that I have ever started was inspired by, in a way, what the Women's Forum is, and that is looking at the women around me. What do they need? You know, what did I need? What will my daughters need? When I was brought into the Women's Forum in 1997, it was a good fit for me in that I was now the president of the Ms. Foundation and had been for almost 20, 15, 20 years. I had worked with women all over America, funded women all over America, had that privilege, cared about what was going on with women, and had started to actually be involved in things that were um, were important to women in corporate America because my entrepreneurial women were becoming corporate women. If there's a commonality that I think is missing in the country for people and women particularly and that needs meeting, it's the need for community. We need community in every way, but women need a community so that they have people to actually join in doing the work together. and. Uh, learn more, bounce off more, complain more, enjoy more. That's why. I got to be a leader and I got to be where I am uh, because I had five children under six and I needed money. Let's start with that. <laughs> I first got an opportunity at Drake University when there was money for women in, for the government and people coming back to school to build probably the largest division of women's programming in America. And some of that, which I think is great for leadership, is I didn't know what you couldn't do at a university. I had no idea what you couldn't do. So I started these things that helped the university link to the employer community and make money. And it was phenomenal. It was great. And I got very interested in the farm community in Iowa. And the farms were failing at that point. The banks had overlended, and the women were starting businesses. So I decided on a dare to apply, on a dare to apply to the Ms. Foundation for Women so I could go there and do that kind of work. By the time I left the Ms. Foundation, 20 years later, we had, I think, a $13 million endowment, and we had done great work. And then I started the, the White House project because I felt like the women of this country are doing such amazing things in the community that if we don't get them in leadership, in public leadership, into office, we won't ever change what needs to be changed. One of the most fun things that I had a chance to do in my whole life uh, started when research came out about girls losing their voices at adolescence. And we finally came up with something that we thought would be a little program in New York called Take Your Daughter to Work Day. If I had to say the program I was proudest of, it would have to be Take Our Daughters to Work because again, it really infiltrated the culture, you know, and if you aren't infiltrating the culture, you aren't making change. We talk to each other about mentoring. We talk to each other about sponsoring, and we do that in every community. But there are two things we don't talk about. We don't talk about sustaining. And what you need in a time of change, frankly, is to be like your GPS. You need to recalculate, <laughs> recalculate. I think what was, that what made my leadership work and what I see makes many other people's leadership work is that we are at a time of change entrepreneurial because you have to be willing again to to change on a dime so you have to be able to take chances you have to be able to think outside the box you have to be able to bring people together you have to lead collectively and differently but you have to think outside the box right now and that's what women bring and they're all over the women's forum mm -hmm.